Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, globaliz uh, education is the most valuable resource today to humanity. And that's why we're digitalizing it. Because it affects everything. It affects the way we treat the environment, the way we treat each other. And uh, for the first time, we are truly globalizing education. Top-notch educational institutes like Harvard get to spread their content all over. But there is a missing link, which I actually personally experienced myself. Already 15 months ago, I was a student at the University of Amsterdam studying econometrics, and I didn't enjoy myself very much. So in the evening hours, I was following an online course by Harvard, which was much more interesting. So after two months, I wanted to take the logical next step, which I thought was an online exam. But no, for the exam, I was told I would have to fly over to the United States, to Boston, just to do the exam itself, just to get the paper, the accreditation. I was supposed to sit in a small room, and I decided I will not do that, and I will figure out what exactly is going on with the digitalization of education. This problem is happening every single day in Europe. Thousands of kids from Asia or from South America are flying over, for instance, to a technical university, Delft, just to get the accreditation, just to get the paper, a water management course that they bring, they come here to do the exam. So why is that? That is actually because the institutes don't know who's actually sitting behind the computer. Who's the person and is the person cheating? And that's why we developed a proctor exam. What we do with four elements is that we make sure who the person is behind the computer and we make sure that the uh, room where the person does the exam is secure. We do it with these four elements and I will very briefly explain them. We make use of 360 degrees visual and audio surrounding. So when a person makes use of e-learning, he has a computer. So we activate the camera to see the person from the front. But what we saw in the pilots that we were doing at the universities here, it's not, it's not secure enough. What actually happens behind the computer or in the environment? So then we thought with our young team, pretty cool, we used the ideology of bring your own device. As opposed to sending very expensive material to places, it's a logistical nightmare, we figured out, hey, the penetration of smart devices, either a tablet or a smartphone, can be a very cheap one, is enormous. We integrated the camera of this camera to, to act with that camera, and we create suddenly a new viewing angle. So in the pilots that we did, for instance, in TU Delft, we saw students who were putting sticky notes on the ceiling. So in the startup procedure, we ask, show your ceiling, show underneath your desk, show your environment to see that nothing actually is in your room and then place your phone behind you. Students were very innovative with it. They placed it between two books, in a cup. We sent them a movie beforehand to know exactly what angle we were looking for. So we have audio and visual security. The second thing that we implemented is a screen sharing technology. We follow the screen of the computer because the, the student has uh, a computer and has internet so we can detect that nothing goes wrong. Thirdly, we actually implemented a human aspect of it. That's actually a requirement for the university. We create a feeling that the student is all the time being watched, uh, just like in an offline exam room. So you really decrease the fraud level. Fourthly, everything is being recorded. And this is where there's a lot of innovation going on, because what we saw when we actually proctored uh, or examined, examined students in Eastern Europe is that the, um, the uh, internet dropped for 30 seconds. So the recording of this exam doesn't happen on our side, no, it hap happens on their side, and therefore you don't need the internet, and nothing will go wrong if it stops for 30 seconds. Uh, the file afterwards is being sent to us, and we send it directly to the exam commission to really secure the accreditation. Just to make sure that this is not a future kind of thing that will happen. We are already operational at the University of Amsterdam and just like the person responsible here for the e-learning, she specified there is a missing link in e-learning and that's the missing link that today we are fulfilling and we really try to globalize therefore education. The young team behind it, uh, we are actually already five uh, people but we are very motivated really in the startup scene. We work day and night 
just to make this happen and the motivation is really that we ourselves examined kids from Indonesia and it gives a good feeling to know that these kids can actually stay there, get the diploma as opposed to just to receive the know-how but not get the diploma. So equal chances to, uh, how would you say it, equal chances, equal rights. Yeah. <laughs>